The Hoka Mach X versus the Nike Tempo Next Percent. Which one is your better speed trainer? Let's compare and contrast. So before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, watch this content. Thanks so much. Love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and start for all sorts of other updates and things like that. Without further ado, specs for both shoes right here. Let's get right into it. The reason we make this particular comparison is because again, these shoes both have very similar criteria as to what they're sort of made out of in addition to what their purpose is in your training block or so we think and yeah i've had experiences with both shoes and we're just going to kind of talk about where you would kind of use each one and if one is really better than the other so we'll begin with the older of the two shoes which is the nike tempo next percent and as most of you know on this channel already um, I have a very mixed relationship with this shoe and it continues getting more and more mixed as my life continues with it. So specs for the shoe kind of go like this, right? We do have this shoe at about 8.8, 8.9 ounces, leaving at about 250, 260 grams on average. Not too heavy, but also not too light. We do have a heel of about 45 millimeters with a forefoot of about 35 millimeters, giving it a 10 millimeter offset, which designs the shoe specifically for this forefoot strike targeting the air zoom pods here with a plastic nylon carbon plate in this particular shoe with a couple of foams of course we do have our react foam running the top piece we have our zoom x in this middle section and we have another piece of react right there with our typical nike rubber outsole to protect the entire piece and then we have a pretty standard cheap uh I guess textile finish on the top of this shoe with some grading on the on the middle area here to kind of wrap the whole shoe together with its particular build so as we discussed on this channel many times as i've said already like three times already this shoe is pretty much a glass cannon in terms of nike's speed trainers that's available to the market and the reason i bring that up is because these air zoom pods really do pop like almost all the time and when they do a couple of things happen one your run begins to suffer almost immediately and your risk for injury almost increases immediately. And I'll be the first one to tell you that, especially in this pair that has like maybe less than 100, 150 plus miles, that this inner pod here has popped to the point where when I took it on a uh, 10K run, I ended up developing runner's knee almost immediately after that run, which tells me that the firmness and the clunkiness of this particular shoe ended up hurting my knee. So we'll talk more about that in a separate video, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but as a running shoe, this like thing is so beast, so fast. Um, what's not to love about the speed that this shoe kind of brings other than the noise it makes, the clunkiness and its lifespan. So that kind of brings us into the Mach X in this particular case, which in this case, the shoe does run at about 9.4 ounces, a little bit heavier than the ten Tempo Next Percent. Um, it does have a 39 millimeter heel, 34 millimeter forefoot, giving it a five millimeter offset right there. So more of a midfoot strike in this particular shoe compared to that four foot strike that the tempo next percent would pretty much give you there and as we discussed a couple of times before we have a couple of foams here as well kind of working all together to give you the ride that the shoe gives we have this profi plus that runs the four foot area of the shoe we have this like eva piba style foam as well uh running this area in addition to the outsole of the shoe and we have this p-back style carbon plate also running the duration of the shoe which isn't exactly carbon uh directly but it has some plastic recycled materials that are used as well and that's kind of what hoka prides itself on in this particular case and then we do have uh, this jacquard style upper uh, mesh uh, piece textile piece that's kind of running the entire duration of the shoe again it's quite comfortable runs wide and we do have a gusseted tongue also as part of the shoe just to give you the cleanest fit that you can and also the best response for each uh, stride that you kind of put into this particular shoe so with all of this in mind which one is the better speed trainer in your lineup well i think the answer is they're kind of obvious but also uh a little controversial and it kind of finds itself in weird spots we'll break this down per category right which one is your better recovery day shoe it's going to be probably the mock x it's a little bit uh more comfortable a lot wider a little bit more durable easy to take on a slow run without being annoying your easy run shoe also the mock x i would say and it's pretty much for the same reasons you just kind of pick up the pace a little bit and the shoe will just ride along with you now okay 
the Tempo Run shoe. I would say both of them are probably in this category where uh, if you're going a little bit faster, the you know the Tempo Next Percent is pretty much built for this particular purpose, and it's going to be your shoe that's going to be essentially working in tandem with like an Alpha Fly or an Alpha Fly Two, potentially the Three as it comes out. And the same thing goes to the Mach X. It'll keep up with those paces, and it's going to be kind of your training partner at that point for the Rocket and the Rocket X Two. Now, as we get into more threshold workouts, I lean more for the Tempo Next Percent because the shoe is just still faster. It's going to push for that uh, particular pace. And again, the shoe is just built for those speeds a little bit more than I would say the Mach X in this particular case. And then as we get more into racing, I would much prefer, I guess it also depends now, like if you're racing anything below a 15K, Tempo Next Percent for sure, hands down, this is gonna be the shoe that you wanna use for those runs. If you're gonna run a marathon and you have these shoes as your only options, I would definitely go with the Pokemon X, I think overall, like the shoe, is a little bit more soft and will be a lot more forgiving for those longer miles and uh, your body degradation over time will be a little bit easier with this shoe than something like the tempo next percent which i think just has a higher critical mass at some point and yeah just that firm level that this shoe provides is going to be a lot more aggressive and just more painful as the marathon goes on, even though you are going to run faster in it. So you kind of have to weigh your options in that particular case. But again, comparing from what we know of both shoes in their current states, they are really an apples and oranges kind of build, but at the same time, categorically, they find themselves in the same spot in uh, each respective brand's category, right? This is like the carbon daily trainer slash speed everyday racer for nike and like the alpha fly and the vapor fly respectively and the mach x finds itself to be that everyday carbon plate uh racer daily trainer for the rocket and i believe it's the carbon x and the carbon x2 so they both fill, fulfill a similar role but you have to ask yourself as the runner do you want something that's going to last you a little bit longer and be a little bit slower and more of a relaxed ride or are you okay with being that runner who's going to run in something fast that's more glass cannon that's going to break within the first 150 200 miles and you're just going to have to get over it kind of a person that's the question you have to ask yourself do you have like 200 250 plus dollars to throw down for this particular shoe or do you have under 200 dollars and you want something that's going to be more of a reliable more sustainable shoe in your everyday run so that's where we're going to leave it categorically. This is the faster shoe overall, but it's not going to be used for your easy day runs. And then this shoe has a lot more consistency in terms of being an easy recovery and even like tempo runner to an extent. And you would race in this if it was your only option, but you need to consider that you're not going to be running nearly as fast as you would in the tempo next percent. Hopefully that's a good enough comparison we can do for the two shoes at this current time. I don't want to like deep dive into all of their specs and whatnot because I think you as the viewer, you would know obviously that these are, despite being like categorically similar, they really do have their own niche place in the running shoe world. So we will leave it at that. But if you agree or disagree with the assessment, let me know in the comments below. If you own both of these shoes and you have an opposite opinion, also let me know in the comments below. But yeah. We will leave the review here, so thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.